In this video, we're going to discuss the differences between golfer's elbow and cubital tunnel syndrome, mainly so you can guys get an idea of how to manage this condition. In this video, we're not going to cover any particular stretches or exercises, but we're going to discuss the differences between the two problems, cubital tunnel syndrome and golfer's elbow, because a lot of people are confused about actually what the differences are. If you guys would like more information about cubital tunnel syndrome and golfer's elbow, like the channel, thumbs up the video, more is to come. This is Sarah. She's going to help us out with some of the discussion today, the locations on the body, and be able to find bony landmarks, as well as talk about the symptoms associated with both. The trouble with these two conditions is a lot of people are very confused about what they're actually experiencing. Hopefully in this video today, we're going to give you some insight and some ideas about what you're potentially dealing with, and then I'll help you with figuring out how to manage it. At any point in time, if you want some help from us, you can click on the link in the description below to contact us, or we have something in the corner for you to click on as well in the video. Let's go over the locations first, all right? Say hi, Sarah. Hi guys. <laughs> okay. So anytime we're talking about golfer's elbow, it's going to be in the inner part of the elbow. It's not the outer part. The outer part is tennis elbow. Technically golfer's elbow is called medial epicondylitis. Also there's things that pass through the area. The ulnar nerve comes down from the, this, uh, from the neck, converges with other nerve roots of the spine, of the spinal nerves, and becomes the ulnar nerve. Once it gets into here, it passes right around this region here below this little bony spot right there mm -hmm. that may be sensitive on a lot of you, but it does not 100% indicate medial epicondylitis or golfer's elbow or cubital tunnel syndrome. And then it passes this way and it goes down into these two fingers. Show them those two fingers. There you go, right there. This is uh, almost like Spock. Yes. Okay, there. Reverse peace sign. Reverse peace sign. These are the two fingers mm -hmm. that may become numb, tingly, burning, stabbing, aching with a cubital tunnel problem or an ulnar nerve problem. This will not happen with golfer's elbow. That's probably the most important difference between. Mm -hmm. Also too, it's important to note that if you have golfer's elbow, it's going to feel pinpoint onto this region here where the flexor tendons come into the actual insertion of the elbow. The way that you would find the flexor tendons is you would flex your wrist and your fingers feel strong. Thank you so much. Okay, and then relax. <laughs> And then if you put your finger over this area, you'll, you'll, no, you'll notice when you contract your, rit, your, uh, your fist, this area will start to pop up. The ulnar nerve will not necessarily pop up. And actually the location of the ulnar nerve is a little bit more behind and underneath because we have that bony ridge there and it's underneath there, okay? And so this is the location. However, palpation, location of the region being sensitive is not 100% a smoking gun for a uh, golfer's elbow. Now, Sarah, they showed you a, a test in school for a golfer's elbow, right? Yes. What was that? Um, so we are going to kind of resist this motion here. You want me to resist it for you? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ow. Ow. So maybe, <laughs> right maybe golfer's elbow. Okay. The one that we learned in school mm -hmm. here was like this and then flex. Uh, sorry, like, there we go. Mm -hmm. And then, so that was one mm -hmm. too. Uh, it's important you have to support here versus, um, uh, there's sometimes this can in, um, load sections of the shoulder, the ulnar nerve is coming down, so it's not really exclusive. Mm -hmm. We're trying to ideally get the, the, the load happening at this point here, mm -hmm. okay? Now with the ulnar nerve, you can actually do nerve palpation, which is kind of nice because it'll give you an idea of if you're looking at more of a nerve problem as well. And so you can find the crease of the elbow here, you creep your way back, and then you find your way into the, um, uh, the cubital tunnel. And you, if you play around here, you can actually flick the guitar string of the nerve. It's almost gonna feel like kind of squishy, but kind of firm, and it's running this direction. And you can hold a little pressure on it. Now for some of you, if you hold long enough, like 10 seconds-ish, mm -hmm. your fingers will start to tingle. And if this is a duplication of your problem and it makes your area of complaint actually become more sensitive too, there's a possibility this is gonna be more of a cubital tunnel syndrome type of problem. But you can also do the same thing from above too. And so if you move your hand into this region here and you find those little Rayleigh spots, you'll also find a pulse. The pulse is right around the nerve. Don't compress the pulse, but you're just gonna move a little bit here, almost like flicking the bundle. This is the vein, artery, and nerve of the, um, of the arm. 
which the ulnar nerve is part of. Now, if you press this and it creates your elbow pain, your forearm pain, or your wrist pain, or the numbness tingly, this is probably a little bit more of a cubital tunnel problem versus, or an ulnar nerve problem for that matter, versus a golfer's elbow. So how does something like this happen? So that's a good question. If we're talking about cubital tunnel, um, it's idiopathic, so we don't really know all of the mechanisms of how it starts, but we can theorize a little bit. Um, many people will have pressure onto the inner part of the elbow, whether they're driving. This is, in America, this would be your right arm. Okay, <laughs> actually, well, I guess you can have the thing there too. Um, or if you're working at a desk job and you have a, a, a support for your elbow, then it's being pressed on all day. Sometimes it will create sensitivity. Some people have this too. Now, it's important to note as well that when people have uh, that going on too, sometimes excessive sitting can load other parts of the ulnar nerve, which can create a similar pattern as uh, cubital tunnel syndrome. But most commonly, it's going to be this. Also, people tend to wake up in this position, which is mm -hmm. a tensioned position for the ulnar nerve at the cubital tunnel. And so sometimes waking up in this position with your fingers tingly or having elbow pain, uh, that's, prob that's probably the most common. In regards to golfer's elbow though, the theory is that it's from uh, overuse of the flexor group, okay? And the reason why they call it golfer's elbow is because a lot of times golfers will have it, although you'll have people with other racket sports have it too, like tennis, which is kind of stupid because you say this is golfer's elbow, that's tennis elbow. You're allowed to have either or if you play golf or tennis. Mm -hmm. Okay, it really depends mm -hmm. on the mechanics of how you hold the racket. That was my next question. So you don't have any more questions? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, this is essentially they call it a tendinopathy. All right, a tendonitis, tendinopathy. Generally speaking, tendinopathy is probably more appropriate. Um, but it's where the tendon starts to become a little bit of de like more degenerated. Um, there's areas of the tendon which will become uh, kind of dead islands of deadness, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine the tendon as like a donut. The intersection of the donut where the hole is, is essentially dead or degenerated. Uh, so it doesn't really function as the rest of it. The good news is, is that if you have golfer's elbow or medial epicondylitis, essentially you would rehab it by doing um, some type of progressive load. Because as you start to load the tendon, the tendon itself grows a little bit and it actually helps out to compensate for the section of dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the, the majority of the problems uh, when people are trying to rehab this area, they focus on what they can do to, to get that dead area back, which typically they can't. It's, um, but the better approach is to actually rehab the actual tenant so the tenant has full function versus focusing on the dead zone. How long does that typically take? Ooh, that's a little bit of time. Um, I, I'd venture to say that's gonna be like two, three months. Okay. Sometimes we have to take away the sport which is provoking it. Um, the ulnar nerve problem, or the cubital tunnel one, is it'll actually a lot faster. Um, and that's be more preferred, although it can seem more scary because um, it's a nerve problem. Mm -hmm. Usually things like um, N NCVs, and, uh, NCVs and EMGs are not really required too much. MRIs and x-rays are not always required. Typically, if your problem is intermittent, like you feel it now, but mm -hmm. not in an hour mm -hmm. or certain times a day, that's probably the best case scenario. It means that your nerve is still getting, um, is still getting nutrition and it, it is still able to recover a lot quicker. So if you guys have questions on this, reach out to us and also make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we see a lot of people with ulnar nerve, inner elbow pain, or medial epicondylitis or golfer's elbow. It's usually not too hard to solve, but normally a lot of you will require a series of exercises and stretches curated specifically to you, your body type, as well as your history. Not all the exercises are the same, and I think it's a, it's a myth that there's specific exercises that are gonna be a, a, a magic for every single person because some people will try the same exercise or stretch and it'll make them feel worse while other people will feel better. So curating the exercise or the movement medication for your particular problem is actually very important for a quick recovery. So if you guys are looking for help, we have uh, a link in the, in the bottom or the description to where you can reach out to us, but make sure you subscribe and like the video so you get more videos just like this to come on YouTube.